I have literally made an off-grid battery backup system right here, and it's only taking up this much space, which is actually pretty surprising because this has a lot of battery capacity. I've got a large 3000 watt inverter and a huge MPPT charge controller where I could recharge this whole system and basically run any loads that I would need because this is a powerful battery and a powerful inverter and a powerful charge controller. Now this is a very rudimentary, very basic off-grid backup system that I'm running here, but this has some amazing capabilities to expand. So if you're looking for a simple backup system where you could run your fridge, your freezer, lights, fans, CPAP machines, who knows what, all of those vital devices are very easy to run on something like this. And I can even add up to 16 of these batteries together to have a massive battery pack. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video using the Redodo Life PO4 battery. So basically what I've got here is an MPPT charge controller from High Solus. This is their 60 amp version. And with a 12 volt battery, I can put up to 900 watts at once into this battery. So having such a powerful charge controller allows me to really maximize the solar input on this because literally most solar generators don't even have 900 watt solar input. The vast majority of solar generators and power stations absolutely do a horrible job of solar input, which is the worst part about it because they're supposed to be really focused on solar. And then up here, I've got a Renogy 3000 watt inverter. So this, with the inverters, you have to get uh, the voltage properly matched to the battery. So since this is a 12 volt battery, this is a 12 volt inverter that can go up to 3000 watts output. Now the thing with batteries is the higher the voltage the battery is, the more efficient it's going to be and the bigger load you're gonna be able to do off of it off of an inverter, as well as better charging. If this were a 48 volt battery, I'd be able to get way more solar input. So in a 12 volt setup with this charge controller, I can only do 900 watts, but if this were a 48 volt battery, I could actually do 3,400 watts. And 3,400 watts from a charge controller literally beats every single solar generator out there. I've got my Delta Pros, I've got my Blue Eddy AC500, I've got the Titan, I've got the Zenders, I've got Almost every solar generator that's come out, uh, whether I've tested them or I have them here and I'm using them, including the Mango Power E. I've even got the uh, High Solus Apollo, which is delayed for a while because it had some issues. Everything except the Apollo is beat by this charge controller and battery configuration if it's a 48 volt battery. So if I got four of these batteries, I could be inputting 3,400 watts and I'd have around 10,000 watt hours of battery capacity, which is a lot. Now right here, you can see I'm running a 572 watt load. I've actually just got a space heater down here. Just needed to use a lot of power while not making a lot of noise. And so I decided to use that space heater and it runs it no problem at all. Even if I turn this up onto high, we'll see this spike up and it should be around 1200 to 1300 watts. Now the inverter is going to determine how much power I can run in one sense, but its power source is the battery. So the battery truly is what determines how much power you can run. So this is where it's important to have an understanding between battery discharge rate and inverter capacity because the inverter may be larger than what the battery can even run. Now the good news is the user manual is very good. It's very easy to understand, very clear, even on the first page here. We can see the operating voltage, the charging voltage right here, which is 14.4 volts. Continuous load power is 2,560 watts, which means this can drain at 2,560 watts. So if I were to put 3,000 watts on it, theoretically, this battery should shut off and stop the power from going to the inverter. And we're gonna test that here shortly. But it says it's maximum charging and discharge current is 200 amps. Now, the reason this is important is because there are a lot of other batteries on the market uh, besides this Rododo, and they only have a 100 amp discharge which is half of the amp hour capacity. Now this version is the 200 amp hour plus. Now the plus is different from the standard 200 amp hour because they have a version just like this that is not the plus. And the difference is 
it will only discharge at 100 amps, whereas this one can discharge at 200 amps. So the BMS, or the battery management system, which is the microchip inside, allows it to discharge and recharge much faster. Now currently, these batteries are about $650, which is a very good price for a battery of this size and caliber. So if you're looking for backup power, then you may want to consider these if you're gonna do a DIY system. Now, there are some things that you need to consider when you're doing a DIY system. For example, this little device here is something you'll need in order to be able to connect your inverter to your battery. Basically what it does is it slows down the energy moving from the battery into the inverter because if you just go ahead and connect the inverter to the battery, you're gonna get a pretty big spark. Ask me how I know. Now it's a common mistake everybody makes, but realistically you would wanna use a capacitor like this to make sure you're slowing down the energy going in just to get everything inside here, have a little bit of energy so that way when you connect, there's not a huge inrush. You would also want fuses and inline DC disconnects, which are basically switches that allow you to turn off the inverter. Uh, you'd plug that into this main cable here. You do the same for the charge controller. And so there are a lot of things you would need to add to this if you're really going to use it all the time. There are three major parts. You have the battery itself, the inverter, charge controller. You connect those two things to the battery and you've got a built system. Now, Redoto was nice enough to send this out to me, so I do appreciate their support in that sense. That way you guys are able to find out if these batteries are any good. So far, I've been testing this for quite a while. I have not had any issues. There are a lot of other videos with teardowns and stuff like that that are really good. But in my opinion, it's absolutely worth going with the plus version because it's only $40 more than the non-plus version, and so I would definitely go with that one. Now I wanna go ahead and do the test to see if we can get this over 2600 watts output to see what's actually going on, but it's a little complicated because this meter cannot show over 1800 watts output. So right now we're basically at 1200, and so we know that that's gonna be at 1200 on high, and then I wanna see what this heat gun is gonna do on high. So this is putting out 1450 right now, I've got another heat gun here. I'm gonna plug it in and see how much power it uses. On the low speed and low heat, we're getting 370 watts. So this is gonna get us right close to 3000 watts by running all three of these together. All right, so I've got three outlets here. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in all three devices. The space heater's already going. This is now on low and low, and then we're gonna to go to high. So right now, we are using just under 3,000 watts because we tested how much all of this was gonna use. Okay, I'm getting an error on the inverter. So I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit. Okay, so I don't know how much power I'm using now. I have this on high speed on a four. So that's actually interesting. The battery didn't shut off, but the inverter was starting to give me some issues. So that's really good to know for this setup. The point is, it's capable of running this heavy load quite easily. Now the whole time I've been doing this, this has been charging with solar as well. So that is one of the cool things is you can be running a load and recharging it at the same time. Bottom line is I've really liked the Redodo battery. I can't find anything wrong with it, both in my testing and seeing other people's testings and teardowns. So it is one that I can recommend if you're looking for DIY batteries. Now these can connect up to 800 amp hours together in parallel. And so you would basically go positive to positive to positive and negative to negative to negative. And that's gonna give you a parallel connection still at 12 volts. So in that setup, you can only do four of them. But then if you were to go to 24 volts, you're gonna get eight of them. Or if you go to 48 volts and 800 amp hour battery capacity, you're going to have 16 of these batteries, which would fill up a rack very similar to this, at least most of it. And that'd give you about 38,000 watt hours or 38 kilowatt hours of battery capacity. So that would be a massive system definitely capable of running most houses very easily. If you were to get an inverter set up that would allow you to connect to an interlock switch or something like that to power your house, it's definitely possible to do. So I like Redodo, this seems to work well. I'll have more videos coming out, so make sure you like and subscribe. Be prepared, I'll see you guys in the next video.